Hello, how are you, everyone? Today we are going to discuss scattering theory, the iconal approximation. We have already discussed in our earlier talk the Bond approximation. This is the new approximation. This is known as an iconal approximation. The modifications are done in the Bond approximation. This approximation is a very important approximation in scattering theory. So let us come to the first slide. What is the iconal approximation? Very simple approximation is made and that is shown in this first slide. Iconal approximation. Because of the systematic but difficult procedure to the bond series, we have already seen in our last lecture, bond series. it is an infinite series. And each term becomes bigger and bigger and complicated and more complicated. So there are some other methods of improving the first bond approximation. In one method, the following form, which is already derived by us earlier, is used for ux to assume. So we have already derived, that is f theta phi is equal to minus m divided by 2 pi h cut square integral e to the power minus i vector product k dot x dx ux d2. And we represent this by equation number one. It is assumed that when the incident particle enters the potential region, their de Broglie wavelength gets modified as follows. So the de Broglie wavelength is modified by twice pi divided by k to some other value, twice pi divided by k square minus ux all raised to one half. And that is represented as result two. Now, how it is modified? That is represented over here in the two diagram. In the first diagram, it is a wave approach. In wave approach, we have mentioned that the plane wave is incident on the target and it is getting scattered and it becomes a spherical wave. And that we have already seen in our earlier lecture. So incident plane wave represented by parallel lines and target getting a spherical wave and it is scattered in a radially outward direction. The same thing can be considered as a projectile approach. In a projectile approach, whenever the incident beam is entering the uh, potential region of a target, its path is getting deviated and which is, which is known as scattering is taking place. So projectile coming towards the target, entering the potential region, the path is getting deviated and path is getting deviated and it moves towards the infinitely large distance and after getting deviated. So we are considering the two points. One point is in the region where there is no potential. And another point we are considering which is in the potential region or after the potential region. So because of this, the wave fronts gets distorted and the ray and the rays are not parallel to z axis as shown in the figure. So we have shown in the figure, figure number two, the particle is in the parallel to z axis. But whenever it enters the potential region, it is getting deviated. It is not parallel to z axis. This effect is small when k square is very large compared to ux. So this effect is very small when k square is large with comparison to ux. Now let us come to the another slide. Now the difference in the phase of the wave between the two points x, y, and z and x, y, z, zero is not simply k, z minus z, zero, but it is represented by an integral as the path is curved due to scattering as follows. So let us go back to our earlier figure. Now we consider that some point over here uh, before the scattering region it is z0 and some point is over here z0 or z. This is z0 point before the target and z point after the target. x, y remains same. So this coordinate is x, y, z0 before the target and x, y, z after the target or after the scattering is taking place. 
Now, difference between the phase, between the two points, one point over here, another point there. It's not simply Z minus Z zero, because it is not a linear path. It is not a linear path, because between this point and this point, it is not a linear path. It is a curved path. And that is why we have to take a line integral. And that is represented in the next slide. Now, the difference between in the phase of the wave between the two points x, y, and z, and x, y, z, 0 is not simply k, z minus z, 0, but it is represented by integral s. The path is called due to the scattering by the following uh, integral. So integral is taken z0 to z, k square minus u x y z prime, z prime is a dummy variable, and raised to one half d z prime. That is equation number three. This effect starts to show the result only when the wave enters the region where the potential is not zero. Whenever the potential is there, this, this uh, starts showing the effect. Before the potential region is reached, at some point, x, y, z, zero, where z, zero is less than zero, means the region before the target. So we have considered the point before the target, it is x, y, z, zero. Let the phase of the wave be k, z, zero. At that particular point, the phase of the wave is k, z, zero before the target. As the particle moves in the positive z direction to another point x, y, z, within the potential region or beyond the potential region. So you can take another point within the potential region or beyond the potential region. And the phase becomes, it is not simple. It is given by this equation, kz0 plus integral z0 to z, k square minus u x y z prime raised to one half d z prime. And that can be written as kz plus Z uh, integration zero Z zero to Z in bracket K square minus U X Y Z prime raised to one half minus K and integration is taken over D Z prime. Now we have to prove that the both sides of the equations are the same. So we have to do some mathematical exercise. So let us taking, let us take the left hand side as it is and right hand side we are writing kz plus integration z0 to z in bracket k squared minus u x y z prime raised to one half integration taken over dz prime minus integration z0 to z k dz prime. So we do that particular modification. Now we come to the next slide. Now left hand side is as it is, right hand side is kz plus integration z, z zero to z in bracket k square minus u x y z prime raised to one half integration is taken over to d z prime and we are solving the set, second integration so it is k z minus k z zero putting the limits now we'll notice that this k z one k z this k z first k z is cancelled out with the another k z this k z is cancels out with another kz. So plus minus is cancel out. Minus minus kz0 becomes plus kz0. So kz0 plus integration z0 to z, integration taken over to k square minus u x y z prime raised to one half d z prime, which is exactly equal to the left hand side. So left hand side and right hand side both are equal to each other. This proves that both sides are equal. Now we are trying to do modification. Now, assuming that u x is very, very less than k square, we have assumed in the first paragraph only that potential is very, very less than k square. Now, expanding this particular thing, so let us focus on that k square minus u. Now, we don't write x, y, z prime. So k square minus u raised to one half. Then we just try to do modification that we are taking uh, uh, this, is, this we are taking as equal to k in bracket one up one minus u divided by k square. We have taken k square common. So comes out of the square root becomes k. 
तो के इन ब्रैकेट वन माइनस यू डिवाइडेड बाय के स्क्वायर रेस टू वन नाउ दिस कैन बी एप्रोक्सिमेटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ ए सीरीज सो इट कैन बी रिटर्न एस के इन ब्रैकेट वन माइनस यू डिवाइडेड बाय टू के स्क्वायर माइनस यू स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय फोर के स्क्वायर माइनस अप टू इनफाइनाइट टर्म्स and we consider that k square is itself very big with comparison to ux so each term in the series becomes smaller smaller and smaller so we are neglecting the high higher terms or higher order terms because they are negligibly small so we are retaining uh, first two terms only so it is approximately equal to k in bracket 1 minus u divided by 2k square so the uh, the term k square minus u raised to 1 half can be approximated equal to k in bracket 1 minus uh, u divided by 2 k square and that is termed as equation number 5 now using equation number 5 in equation number 4 so we can simplify this so k is kz plus integral z0 to z in bracket k square minus u x y z prime raised to 1 half minus k integration taken over to dz prime that can be represented as kz the first term as it is now we are replacing the integral so it is z0 to z in bracket k in bracket 1 minus u divided by 2 k square minus k and integration taken over to dz prime again simplifying this kz plus integration z0 to z k u minus k minus u divided by 2 k square and it is 1 k and 1 k is um, cancels out because we are opening this bracket so 1 k and 1 k is cancel out so it is u divided by 2 k minus k and d z prime now further simplifying it is k z integration taken over z 0 to z and the plus and minus k cancels out so it is minus u divided by 2k dz prime so the left hand side can be simplified into a very simple term now again left hand side we are writing as it is and the right hand side we have written is equal to kz now we write a full form minus 1 divided by 2k and we are writing integration z0 to z instead of writing u we write u x y z prime d z prime now we are using uh, the second term it is 1 upon 2 k so we are taking uh, uh, the help of uh, two different equations for u we are representing that u is equal to 2 mv divided by h cut square so instead of writing u we are putting the value of u in terms of v and second taking that k is equal to h cut divided by p so the second term uh, in this equation we are representing by two different uh, equations one is taking k is equal to h cut divided by p so this 2k is represented by that and we are writing u is equal to 2mv divided by h cut square now we come to further simplification simplifying further left hand side is as it is the right hand side is here it is kz minus m divided by h cut 1 divided by p now we know that p is equal to h cut k and from that k is equal to p divided by h cut so simplifying that again the integration is taken over z0 to z v x y z prime d z prime again simplifying kz is equal to now we are writing for m divided by h cut mv and we know that the momentum is m into v so p can be represented as m into v so further we can know that uh, m m is cancels out and uh, we have further simplification kz is equal to minus you know, 1 divided by h cut v and v integration taken over to z0 to z capital v x y z prime dz prime and we call it as equation number 6 so 
this left hand side is simplified into this particular form and left hand side is simplified as kz minus 1 upon h cut v integration taken over z0 to z v x y z prime d v. So after substituting many small equations, we have uh, simplified uh, the left hand side in terms of equation. Now taking z0 a point outside the potential region and before this region is reached because z0 is less than zero and the scattering center or target is always the origin of the uh, coordinate system. So z0 is less than zero. One can take this as a minus infinity. For a convenience, we can take as a minus infinity. With this choice, the new approximate wave function for ux in equation number one and improving the Born approximation e to the power i k z as well. So we can take uh, the approximate wave function. So exponential term can be written as exponential i in bracket kz minus one upon h cut v minus infinity to z integration taken over v x y z prime d z prime. And with this equation number one is obtained, which is called the iconal approximation for scattering amplitude. So just by substituting this, equation number one can be modified. And that is shown with a yellow box. So f theta pi is equal to minus m divided by two pi h cut square integration v x exponential in bracket i in bracket minus k dot x minus one upon h cut v integration minus infinity to z v x y z prime d z prime d2. So this is the modified form of equation number one. And that is uh, known as equation number seven, or we call it as equation number seven. And this is called the iconal approximation for scattering amplitude. Now we have already considered over here that capital K is equal to the vector K minus K zero. These are the vectors. And the initial propagation vector K zero gives the value K zero dot X is equal to kz that we have already modified and that we have already discussed in our earlier lecture of Born approximation. So the Born approximation becomes comparatively good or improved only under the following condition. So Born approximation becomes more applicable or good under this condition. So one upon h cut v minus infinity to z integration v x y z prime d z prime modulus becomes very very less than one. so it becomes very very less than one then bond approximation becomes improved but if it is not very very less than one then bond approximation is not improved so this is the modification in the bond approximation and the value can be positive or negative so that is why we have taken a modulus value and this is known as uh, the criterion for the validity of Born approximation. I have shown this with the red box. So this red box shows that this is the criterion for the validity of Born approximation. Born approximation improves when this term is very, very less than one. If it is not very, very less than one, then Born approximation is not a good approximation and that modification we have done. So this approximation can be converted, equation number seven can be converted into Born approximation when we consider that second term is negligibly small. If it is not negligibly small, then equation seven we have to apply. So there is a connection between the iconal approximation and Born approximation. Now we come to the last part, the relation with the WKB approximation. So the iconal approximation to ux is closely related to the WKB approximation. And we have already seen in our earlier lectures, WKB approximation. So the WKB approximation starts from the equations, number nine and 10, 
those are given in a red box. So this is the uh, form of a Schrodinger equation. And this is the form of a eigenfunction, a exponential i s r divided by h cut. And we remember that expanding s r is s r, expanding s r, the logarithm of the wave function in power series of h cut in one of the in one dimension things. So we remember that this can be expanded in the power series of h cut. So h cut, h cut square, and like that the higher dimension of power. The leading term S0 is approximated as the phase of the wave function. And the next term S1 is approximated as the magnitude. So this we have already done in our WKB approximation. So the criterion for the WKB approximation is modulus del K divided by K squared is very, very less than one. And also KR is equal to one upon H cut. It is in bracket two M E minus V R and raised to one half. So physically this means that the potential energy changes are taking place so slowly that the local momentum H cut KR is almost constant over many wavelengths. So this shows the equation number 11, the physical meaning is that the potential energy is taking place or changing so slowly that for a moment, local momentum H cut KR is almost constant. So the changes are very slow for a small time interval. We can consider it as a constant. In the present case, one can assume that S1 can be neglected with comparison to S0 and VR is everywhere small in comparison to E. So we can, we can uh, assume that S1 can be neglected in comparison to S0. And uh, the VR is very small in comparison to E. So this way we have a high energy approximation in which VR does not change rapidly. So we have considered the high energy approximation where VR is very small, very small, and in comparison to, uh, uh, com with comparison to E. So uh, this, this is known as the high energy approximation. And again, the thing is considered that VR does not change rapidly. Now we come to the next slide. Now at at a high energy, the following condition should be fulfilled for the bond approximation to be valid. So it is H cut V raised to minus one. So it is one upon H cut B, integration taken zero to infinity, VR dr is very, very less than one. This is equation number 12. Now the important finding we have written here with the red color box. However, this parameter can be larger than unity. This parameter can be larger than unity for the weak potential of the long range, even though V, potential is very, very less than total energy. The iconal approximation does not put limit to this value and hence it is superior to bond approximation. So this is the condition put by the bond approximation. The bond approximation considers that H cut V inverse zero to infinity integral V R D R modulus should be very, very less than one. But this condition is not put by the iconal approximation, even though V is very, very less than E or potential energy is very, very less than total energy. And this condition is not put by iconal approximation. And that is why this is superior to bond approximation. Now for further reading, I suggest that 
the textbook of quantum mechanics by Hughes and Venkateshan. Another book is quantum mechanics by Schiff. Now let us come to the next slide. This is showing the importance of this topic. In theoretical physics, the iconal approximation in Greek language, iconal means likeness, icon or image. So in Greek language, iconal means likeliness or icon or image is an approximative method useful in wave scattering equations which occurs in optics, seismology, quantum mechanics, quantum electrodynamics, and partial wave expansion. So in many fields, this type of approximation is used. This approximation, it was introduced by G. Moliere uh, in 1947, who studied elastic scattering of fast charge particles in various materials. So it was applied to scattering theory by Moliere in 1947. And this is having a close relationship with the optics. So in optics, it was used by Heinrich Bruns. In eight, he was born in 1848 and died in 1990. A German mathematician and astronomer, he first used the term iconal approximation. And he used in terms of uh, optics. Iconal approximation is a very important approximation in scattering. Now we come to one more interesting slide. There are large number of paintings available on quantum mechanics. We feel that quantum mechanics is very dry subject, but it has attracted attention of many painters. And one painting, which was uh, painted by Benjamin Arizmendi, Arizmendi. And the title of the painting is Entanglement, the Aesthetics of Quantum Mechanics. And we will find a lot of equations like cat and prey, then wave function UG, then expectation value, then wave forms, everything. The derivations are uh, introduced in a colorful manner in a painting. So this painting was done by Benjamin Aris Mendy, by American painter. And the quantum mechanics dry subject has been made colorful by this particular painting. And let me see uh, the other colorful things. These are the colorful things of a nature. In April and May, we find a lot of flowers. In a university campus, beautiful flowers on a flower bearing trees, Garmala, and beautiful flowers on Champa trees. These are again, the colorful nature and colorful painting done by nature. So thank you very much for patient hearing. Thank you so much. And now I stopped sharing the slides. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we end our meeting. Thank you very much.